right. And on that note, hello, everyone out there in digital uh, something. I had something for that, but now I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> well, this is how I GM, as you probably well know. And if not, welcome. Uh, this is the third session of Star Trek Fenrir. Uh, if you're not familiar with what Fenrir is, it is a tabletop role-playing game that we are playing using the Star Trek Adventures rule set by Modavius Entertainment. Um, what you need to know are just a few simple facts. Uh, we are set in the Star Trek Online era, uh, more specifically the year 2410. The Fenrir herself is a Cerberus class, a variant of the Prometheus class, as seen on Voyager. Uh, the Fenrir has taken over the reins of flagship uh, in the Sabine Expanse from the old USS Ophion. You don't need to have watched any old Ophion games uh, to enjoy this one, but you might catch a few references and some subtle nods if you do. Uh, the reason I mention this is because you can find the VODs for both Ophion and Fenrir on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions like Spotify, iTunes, etc. Um... Real quick, I just have to say two things. Uh, the first is that uh, Mr. Matthew Black will be joining us a little bit of ways in. Uh, at that point, I will have to sort of pause, let the players role play while I readjust cameras. So if I go quiet or I suddenly shift to the players, that's what's going on. Um, the other thing I have to say is that uh, it wouldn't be a Twitch stream if I didn't do a little bit of shilling. So if you can support whichever way you can, follow, sub, donation, bits, patron, whatever. It's all greatly appreciated. Just take care of yourselves first, because I would hate to be the reason you couldn't. Um, but with that out of the way, we are going to start uh, with an opening monologue, as I like to do uh, with all of my games. And for Star Trek Adventures, that means a captain's log. So, Captain Archuleta, what do you have for us tonight? Uh, captain's log. Stardate 8749.1.8. Trax Epsilon 1 seems to have left a dark mark on the away party. Many of their reports had addendums about just how awful it was on the surface. Lieutenant LL and Chief Engineer Maddock are about to finish their 48-hour quarantine, and with luck, they'll be back on duty after being cleared by Dr. Saniri. I'm hopeful political exchange goes well with the Krillian now that we've been formally introduced. Now, we are en route to assist the USS Pathfinder, a Bellerophon-class vessel. The nature of their priority one distress call is a mystery, as even our computer has been unable to decipher the 15 character jumble of letters in the transmission. X A S H N X C J K W K D H G B. I believe it was Earthling author Terry Pratchett who said real stupidity beats artificial intelligence every time. In any case, I've been staring at this string of scrambled code for so long my brain is beginning to match. The Bellerophone class is a fairly new line, which concerns me that they weren't able to handle whatever problem landed in, landed them into their predic predicament. I wonder what we're flying into and if we're ready for it. All right, very well. And as the captain has alluded to, our first scene is actually going to be in sick bay, as we overlook Maddox and a certain supporting character uh, undergoing the last bits of their quarantine. Now, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, in their last mission, both Alel and Matic, uh, their faceplates of their EV suits were shattered, and in the process, they were exposed to an alien atmosphere. So this quarantine is mostly a safety precaution. They haven't really shown any signs that um, the atmosphere has twisted or harmed them in some way. This is a purely precautionary measure. Um... The actual CMO, Commander Saniri, is in her office, while the others are simply being monitored by none other than Mr. Maddox's wife, Savia. But for the moment, uh, it is just Alel and Maddox just sort of uh, shooting the shit, catching the breeze, whichever, whichever way you want to phrase it. So I'm going to let you guys have at it. Oh, what's the, Commander? What's that Earth song... 99 bottles of beer on the wall. 99 bottles of beer. Something like that. It's, yeah, it's that. Uh, take one down, pass it around. 98 bottles of beer on the wall. It's an old drinking song. Um, I'm not entirely sure of its origins or why you want to sing while you drink, but I mean, 
Hey, teach their own. Oh. I thought it was a way to pass boredom. How long have we been in here? Uh, I don't know. I'd say probably a day or two. And then he'll just kind of like look over towards uh, Savia just to try to see what her response to be would be the how long the question. So she, she sort of sighs and says, well, as I told you five minutes ago, you have been here for 47 hours, 32, no, sorry, 37 minutes now. And if you really want me to get into the seconds, I can do that too. If you don't mind, my dear. <laughs> she rolls her eyes and says, very well, you have been here for also 24 seconds in addition to what I just said. Is that 24 seconds at the beginning of the statement or at the end of the statement? She like picks up like a, one of those like stuffed animals you would like comfort a kid with and just throws it playfully at you like, eh. Hey, at least it wasn't a bedpan. <laughs> <laughs> Matic kind of like tosses it back. Um, He'll pick up a uh, data pad and just kind of go over what, like, some of, like, the daily reports of what's been going on in, like, engineering while he's gone and stuff like that. And uh, he'll just, uh, so, uh, open question to the room. Ensign Jensen, how's he been? Savia, like, just sighs deeply. And uh, Alel, thankfully, Jensen hasn't been in while you have been here. Uh, but that could change very quickly because I'm going to spend two threat. And guess who walks through the door? God. None other than our favorite hypochondriac, Mr. Ensign Jensen. And uh, Mander. Actually, it looks like he's injured himself for real this time. Uh, he is sort of cradling his forearm, his right forearm. And not only is his uniform torn along that side, but there is a deep, bloody gash that is uh, quite literally dripping onto the floor uh, as he walks in. And uncharacteristically, usually when Jensen comes in, he goes, Dak! Uh, this time he's very quiet, <laughs> very serious, uh, very stoic, maybe. Uh, but he, he just sort of walks in and stands there, not really sure uh, to look at Alel, look at Savia, look at the commander, uh, just... Doesn't know who to go for to help at this point. Uh, well, are, is is he in the same room with Alel and? Maddie yeah, I mean, now? you guys are in the main room. You're not like in okay. like super quarantine. You're okay. just sort of medical observation quarantine. Okay. Well, she's you know a medical officer, mm -hmm. and so she approaches him. And she's like, well, how'd you do that? He, uh, he, it, it, it's very odd again, because usually he's very quick to respond. But this time, almost as an afterthought, he sort of turns and looks at you with eyes that are distant. And he says, I was, uh, it's on the holodeck. And, uh, you're not going to laugh at me if I tell you this, right? Did you turn the safety safety protocols off or something? I may have taken a dare from a colleague to engage in a Klingon exercise routine. He so says it in a way that <laughs> it's ambiguous and you can infer what you will, but uh, it's Jensen, so. Uh, so Alal decides to turn to... Am I saying this right? Sa Savia? Mm -hmm. Is that her name? And she's like, do you want to deal with this guy? She uh, just slowly slinks in her chair just a little bit like this is not her concern. <laughs> but uh, she does sort of lightly pass you a tricorder just so we can build some momentum. Mm. All right. So this is going to be a very easy uh, task for you. Uh, this should be a insight and medicine, or I'll let you even do reason and medicine. Uh, difficulty zero. Okay. Hey. 
Uh, yeah. Ooh, unfortunately, no successes. But again, it's a difficulty zero. You automatically pass. Just means. No oh, momentum. okay. <laughs> yeah, it just means you unfortunately don't get the momentum. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah. you can confirm that uh, this gash was not made by a Batleth or a Dictog. It was made by the nails of a Klingon female. Again, infers you will. Oh, God. A hell of an exercise routine. Mm -hmm. um, does Alel say this out loud? <laughs> does she? Say what? Do, do you say, like... Oh, this wasn't made by a weapon. It was made by a female. Or like, um, what do you say? So she's not going to break patient confidentiality if he doesn't want to admit what was going on. So she just finds a dermal regenerator and starts to patch him up. And it's a very simple thing. Once you've got the dermal regenerator, you lung it, run it along his arm and this, the flesh and muscle just knits back together neatly. Um, after maybe not even a minute of just passing it over the area, uh, he's good as good. He's good as he uh, should have been when he normally walks in here. Uh, and he just sort of looks at you a little bit more color to him now, and he says, uh, "Thank you, thank you, doctor. Uh, I'm gonna leave if that's okay." It's definitely okay. Let and us know if you need any, need anything else. I, I'll do that, doc. And he leaves, leaving you perhaps confused as to what just happened. Um, the entire time, <laughs> the entire time, Matic would have been hidden behind a data pad, trying very hard to not engage. Because apparently, <laughs> the last time he decided to engage with Jensen, um, it turned him into a Vulcan for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I love how that's just going to be our inside joke now. I love it. Mm. Didn't happen. Alel is going to uh, notice the commander kind of hiding and be like, I guess you're not a fan of him by the way that you're acting. Um, how do I put this nicely? Um, I've met who, yeah, I can't put this nicely. He's a fucking idiot. Oh, I mean, he's not an idiot, he's good at his job, but <laughs> like, it he. he it, it makes me wish that every once in a while I could just throw a hyper spanner or, you know, make him. I, I, I could probably convince him that putting a fork in an outlet will probably fix something. And who knows? It may. I may need to run an experiment. Don't tell the captain I said that. No, oh, it's fine. I mean, we have uh, neural regenerators for a reason, so. Savia like just is subtly tapping at a pad where you two aren't noticing and she's like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh sorry go on if you say I gotta see the counselor anyways <laughs> well that's that's good because then that makes it your decision and not an order So, Alel, how are you feeling today? <laughs> it actually is about that time uh, that there is a call for all of the senior staff to report to the ready or to the conference room to discuss uh, your upcoming mission, which you will arrive at in approximately fifteen minutes. Ooh. Is Maddox still under quarantine? Almost to the minute, uh, the call comes out, and then Savia says, all right, you're both free to go. Thank right. God. <laughs> I got to go trim my toenails. <laughs> she yeah. promptly leaves. I figured. And we are going to cut to the conference room. 
That's a great conversation killer. It really is. Is right. it an ovulin? <laughs> so, uh, at the moment, it's just going to be Commander Rast, Commander Williams, Commander Maddock, and Captain Archuleta. Mm -hmm. uh, as Mr. Black rolls in, we will introduce him appropriately to the scene. But I did want to give you all a moment to discuss matters before you uh, sort of were thrown into the fire, as it were. Yeah. Um, Williams is actually going to turn to Maddock and say, how you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, there was a little bit of a uh, headache that uh, appeared for a couple minutes at uh, in Medical Bay, but uh, it was promptly dealt with. I didn't do anything against regulations about the headache. He kind of like turned his attention from Williams to look at the captain. I didn't do anything about it. There was a legitimate reason for the headache. Yeah. It was just a stupid reason for the headache, but it was handled appropriately. Is Not this hard. headache what I think this headache is? It's a constant, constant. That sort of that sort of nagging pain just that never <clears throat> seems to get any better. Hmm. Okay. Well, um. Do, have we made any headway on the code? Well, I was actually going to ask the room, uh, would anyone like to attempt to decode it? And I would say this is a task. It is a possible task. Uh, but I don't think anyone has code breaking as a focus. That would be correct, sir. I don't, but I've got a, I've got a value that might help us to, to crack this code. Okay. You would I'll be using it. your determination early, but let's hear the value. Yeah. Um, my the, the value is um, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Um, mm -hmm. Just as a, a, as a way for, for Williams to sort of consider possibilities that may be <laughs> skewed one way or the other that, you know, others wouldn't think of. I mean, the captain's laughing, but I think I can I could see it spin. The, I'll let it happen. Okay. The captain always okay. laughs at me. <laughs> Um, so here's what we'll say. Uh, this will be a, holy crap, we're at 80 viewers. Hi, people. I've never had 80 viewers hey, before. Hey, everybody. Hi. Um, so, Mr. Williams, I'd like you to roll me a insight and security. The difficulty on this will be a four, which means you either need to buy with determination those two free successes, mm -hmm. or you need to give me a mo or threat via, or threat for momentum. Yeah, I'm can, gonna... I, can I assist? Uh, if you can tell me how you're assisting. Um, well, He's a spy. Uh, yeah, uh, espionage uh, focus. Ooh, you know what? I'll let it happen. So, Mr. Rast, nice. you're going to be rolling in Insight Security as well. Uh, you remember are only rolling the one dice, and uh, I will give you a focus. Uh, right, and GM, uh, I am going to use my determination to get those two successes. Okay. Uh, I'm also going to give you a point of threat to get an extra die. Uh, it would be two threat because it is your fourth die. Cool, then I'll give you two threat. I'll take the two threat. And I'll give you one threat for one die. So Christ. the one thing you can't can. do is <laughs> assisting characters can't buy dice. That's the okay. only, that's the that's only what thing. I, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Focus, no. Are we like 30 threat? No. Well, the good news is we have four successes. So uh, if Rast rolls, at least he's got the one success. So you have one momentum. And I am going to uh, actually put the distress call on screen because I'm going to edit it here with the solution, which I'm hoping will update in real time. All right, I think at this point, like Williams will have crossed the table to sort of go over with Rast and just kind of tap it on a pad. Mm -hmm. And it just, Williams will just sort of look at Rask and go, do you, do you concur? He nods. And I'll slide the pad across the table to the captain. She's going to take it, flip it over. Kind of ominous. They have found us. When, uh, before we come out of warp, I want yellow alert. 
and take us out of warp just before we get to the Pathfinder. I don't want to be too close. Um, GM is the is the Pathfinder like in system? Like, is it in the solar system or is it sort of in the space between? Uh, it is in a space between. Uh, its last known location was on the edge of a dark matter nebula. Okay. Great. More dark. Is there any reason to believe that they were on a mission than what is on the official file? Roll me a insight and command difficulty one, Mr. Matic, and we'll find out. Insight command. Uh, let's see how I can bullshit. Um, <laughs> that's, that's half this game, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, I like the uh, I like the captain's new art. Yeah, I like the like the braid she's got going on. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, no, power systems is not going to apply. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Just hook a bunch of batteries up to it. <laughs> yeah, um, I got nothing. All right. Well, I mean, you just—I mean, you're rolling two dice, yeah. so. I can't believe I had a focus for code breaking. Let's uh, let's pray for two twenties. Hey, look at that! You even get a momentum off of that. Dang. So, Matic, uh, based on the records of the Pathfinder, uh, as far as you know, they were just on a routine uh, sort of reconnaissance slash pathfinding mission. Um, they had not reported any trouble before this distress call had went out. Uh, in fact, the last available logs would indicate that there was uh, not even like problems with their eps conduits because we'll we'll flavor it that way like they were off they were operating at a very high proficient level like they they were not having problems kind of a thing um as an engineer matic will be very skeptical mm -hmm. were they operating too efficiently it's a good question uh if you give me a momentum i will answer that question how do y'all feel about that Go for it. Uh, Combat leader. All right. The momentum <laughs> has been spent. Uh, Matic, uh, I'm going to say, because you've asked, <laughs> yes, you've seen Cook numbers before because, as is tradition among all Starfleet engineers, you're sort of in competition with one another to have the most efficient ship, the most... Uh, What's another word that I'm trying to... Basically, yeah, you're doing the thing that Jordy does where he's like, I have the interflux ratio at like 96.5%. So you know that when someone says that they're running at 98%, they're either full of it or they're cooking the books. Um, judging off of the numbers that at least are coming from the engineering aspect, mm -hmm. um, is there any sort of way to infer like uh if they were um if they're trying to hide anything like uh is this like is this like a newer ship that's had issues with let's say maintaining a stable warp bubble above warp whatever mm -hmm. um and but this engineer all of a sudden has this magic fix that he somehow miraculously found or like something along those lines. I'll give it to you free because you spent the momentum. Uh, your guess is that because it is such a brand new class of ship and a recently developed ship out of the shipyards that they are probably cooking the books so that they look better in the eyes of Starfleet. Because normally a new ship, new class has a lot of kinks and you yourselves are not immune to this. So... Um, at that moment, Matic will just kind of look at the roof tiles and then back at the data bed. Um, uh, yeah, I guess I'll kind of just reach it to the captain. Like, yeah, I mean, they've been operating efficiently, but the numbers are cooked. So, I mean, there's no way to tell if they're trying to boost this information because they want to 
not look like complete idiots or maybe <clears throat> fucking uh, core of engineers that Lanisha finally got something right after God knows how many years. <clears throat> hmm. So they're fudging their reports then. But how would that relate to their distress call? Um, I mean, I'm not exactly the most sciencey person, but from what I've come to understand, there's been certain times that starships, uh, in a way, have affected uh, black matter nebulas before, where it, where there were adverse effects. Um, I mean, I'm not, I can't go into full detail about how you know an eps conduit running at this if it at running at this level was able to create some sort of electrical charge that did this or that all i know is that it's happened before and it's one of those that it's possible that happened again um the only thing is is that with them being found by something I mean, there's a possibility that the Dark Matter Nebula could have somehow affected their minds. Um, I mean, I had to deal with Psy Station on Arcadia. It could be something similar to that. Mm. Well, it sounds like they drew unwanted attention, whatever that is likely related to the nebula. So we need to be prepared when we drop out of warp. Uh, if we see the ship and shields are down, we need to scan it to actually get a truthful analysis of how they're operating if people are still alive. So just be prepared. Well, if we get close enough, we may be able to do a detailed scan, but I'd hesitate against dropping the shields to transport over if we're going to board her. Yeah, we'll have to play by ear on that one. And right on cue, you get a page from someone on the bridge, probably Mr. Black, and says, uh, Captain, uh, we have arrived in system. Uh, all right. To your stations. All right. And we're going to cut to the bridge, at least for a moment. As uh, you all take your stations... Uh, on screen, uh, you see off to sort of the left-hand side of the view screen, there is a resplendent dark matter nebula, which is a collection of darker gases. We're talking deep purples, deep blues, uh, basically large cloud of interstellar gas that's very pleasant to look at. Um, but as the view screen shifts and sort of focuses a little bit to the right of the nebula and begins to zoom in, you see that there is an asteroid field of some sort, or at least a large debris field. Uh, could go either way. Um, and in the middle is a, a gleaming hull of what you're hoping is the Pathfinder. Report. And Mr. Rass, since uh, I think you have the highest science at the moment, yes? Uh, do I? Really? Well, that's He's a good question. Good. <laughs> Who science has gooder the than me. Science. Gooder. My no do science. My science. I, I have I have a one. So oh. I don't yeah, know. Well, uh... I have a two. <laughs> so Maddox, you are the science guy. Yeah. Yeah. God damn it. Uh da -da -da -da. I have a two two. But... Well there you go. We'll just have the captain do it, you know. There you go. Captain <laughs> has a two two. <laughs> Not on the bridge. Oh she does it. <laughs> um actually. Mm-hmm. If we're about to do like some scanning stuff with the sensors, I may want to do it because I have technical expertise so I can re-roll dice. Okay. Let's do that then. Matic, I'd like you to roll me a reason science. And then uh, Commander Rass, let's have you do the ship. 
Uh, the ship will be rolling a sensor science. Alrighty. The difficulty on uh, this task yeah. will be a one. Yeah. Um, new ship, so I'm going to pull prototype engineering. And, I'll give it to or, you. Uh, okay. All right. Hey Three total successes, which means you get two momentum. Uh, so Matic, of course, runs the scan, and the information is going to be available to all of you. Um, so I'm just going to show this handout to the players, and uh, I'm going to let them flavor it as they wish. There should be a handout entitled Pathfinder Scans. Um, well, you know, I'll, Williams will speak up. I'll, I guess maybe we'll cut this up into chunks and do bits and pieces of it. Okay. Um, but Williams will say, uh, sensors show the outer hull is damaged. It's pockmarked. Looks like energy energy discharges and, and hull breaches. She may have seen combat. Uh, damage, the damage on the Pathfinder, I, I feel that if we try... Uh, using a single tractor beam, uh, we're going to risk further damage to the ship. Mm, uh, main power's offline. Probably battery will ba prob batteries will last maybe another three hours. Um, I'm only getting about half the crew's life signs, maybe a maybe a third of them, um, and they seem to be concentrated on deck one and main engineering. Can we detect anything in the space around the nebula or nearby that would raise alert? Hard to say, Captain. The dark matter nebula has got some elevated levels of concentrated disodium that severely hampers the sensors. But uh, looks like the ship has drifted from the position contained within the dress in the distress call. It's now in an asteroid field. Uh, and the ore deposits in that asteroid field are going to make tran uh, transporting, even with pattern enhancement, very difficult. Well, <laughs> um, Matic would like to, I would like to scan the uh, weapons or energy marks on the ship, um, mm -hmm. try to see where they may have originated from. Um trying to see like if they're maybe Romulan based or Klingon based or some other like feels an attack or if this was a natural thing. Sure. Blame the Romulans. I see what it's like. I tell you what, <laughs> if you give me one momentum, I will answer in a way that will make sense in character. What if I want to roll? I mean, you could, but this would allow us to actually hear from our con officer for once. <laughs> Just because oh, I feel yeah. bad that she's sort of been a set piece and we sort of glossed over her like we do with every con officer, it seems. Yeah, let's give let's give Lieutenant Relash her, her due. Her, her five minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Lieutenant Relash uh, says, uh, sirs, uh, I'm looking at these scans, and it looks like this damage might have come from a very turbulent ion storm, uh, probably 7, 8, or probably higher. But I'm not detecting any current ion storm in the area. Uh, since a single tractor beam uh, seems to be uh, too difficult for us to manage, um, Captain, what do you think of us... Uh separating the ship and seeing if we can stabilize uh, three tractor beams to pull it out. Uh, the uh, issue with that, Commander, would be uh, if all three tractor beams don't maintain the uh, same uh, strength pull or maintain any sort of uh, commonality, there's a possibility that we may pull what's left of the Pathfinder into three separate parts. Um, we, have, we do have three hours. We need to come up with something. 
I is could it try. possible to get an engineering team over there to maybe rig the structural integrity fields for transport? Well, we need it to. Would, it's the. It would be the ore itself of the uh, asteroids. Um, I know it may t it may take a little bit of time, but I could try to connect the our main computer to the Pathfinder's main computer, and see what their log state. Um, obviously, they would probably have much better sensor data of this area than we would currently have. We may be able to boost our sensor resolution if we launch a probe. <clears throat> I think we should launch the probe. I also think we should um, hail them if we can. I know you said power's offline. Is there any way that they could? I mean, they have backup batteries, right? Their backup batteries right now are maintaining the uh, life support um, and may be maintaining uh, communications. However, we don't know if while we're picking up 40 while we're picking up life signs you know how do we know that they're even conscious true enough but stands to reason the subspace antennas on damage for getting their distress call on that i would simply say as the gm never hurts to hail i want to open a channel Alrighty. And because I want to do, I do want to give you guys a fair shot. We're actually going to do the task for this. Uh, so I think this is going to be Mr. Maddox. Actually, it can be anyone, but I think Maddox, the, the golden boy for this. Uh, it's going to be a control engineering and the Fenrir will assist you with a communications engineering. The difficulty of this is only a zero. Actually, because it is within the asteroid field, I will bump it up to a two difficulty now that I think about it. And what was the ship? The ship is a communications and engineering. All right. All right, a success from the ship. Um, prototype engineering. Or I, quantum I, mechanics. I will give quantum you quantum mechanics. mechanics. Okay. I will give you quantum mechanics. That's that's what I choose to go with. All right. So Whoa. there is. Uh, this is interesting because I'm going to take that complication because this is interesting. So, Captain, the hailing frequencies mm -hmm. are open. What mm -hmm. is it you say? The way you asked me that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> she says, this is Captain Brie Archuleta of the USS Fenrir. We received your distress signal. Can you hear us? Gotcha. So what happens is there's a pause and you start to wonder, are they receiving, you know, and maybe you're just about to ask that question, like, uh, you know, what's going on? When there is a burst of high-pitched sound over the frequency that you're currently on, uh, so powerful, in fact, that Matic, you're seeing that there is an immense feedback loop that is emanating from the Pathfinder and attempting to get into your systems. And you have um, maybe seconds to react. I'm shutting down... I'm just going to immediately just hit like the kill the kill button. Just basically shut down any sort of connection between us and Pathfinder right now. Okay. Like I'll, I'll even block receiving their distress call. All right. That's going to be a daring engineering. I'm going to spend some threat. The difficulty on this is a three. Um, power systems or quantum mechanics because I'm basically just turning off power to those systems. I will say power systems will apply here. All right. Um, you said it's a can, three? Yes. Can I assist it. them? Uh, if you can describe how you're assisting. Uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. Is the cool. ship assisting any? Uh, I would say because you are acting on the ship, the ship is not assisting. Can the captain, like, order him? to cut it off and like give him help that way i would say like, yes uh and you oh yeah the assisting... cheerleader method yeah i was gonna say it's literally the cheerleader method uh you would be assisting him with a presence command okay. 
Uh, um, what about diffuse the tension? Uh, diffuse like, the tension is unfortunately you are not convincing Matic to uh, calm down. Yeah, the base of action. Yeah. Uh, diffuse the tension, if I remember correctly, <laughs> off the top of my head, it's meant for when you're telling people to back down from escalating violence, mm. which doesn't Might really... Might need that. Yeah. Oh, later. Um, okay. Presence and what? Uh, presence and command. Okay. Um, I mean, I... I have inspiration as a focus. I'd say this is very inspiring because if it doesn't get it's... cut off, bad things will happen. Okay. I mean, this is... I'm trying to... Well, no, I'm not trying to determine the source of a technical problem, so I can't use the I know my ship. Mm -hmm. This isn't an extended task. Nope. I'm not being assisted by the computers or sensors. Nope. Um... I think you're just going to have to believe and push that button. I think I'm going to have to spend a momentum if, depending on what the captain was. <laughs> oh, am I rolling first? I would say let's have Matic roll first. That way we're not metagaming the assist. <laughs> <laughs> also because it makes Matic face pop. So, of course, we got to do it that way. <laughs> um, I will spend a momentum to get an extra dice. Okay. Because I got to hope that we can build momentum because we can not roll... 20s ever again. Mm -hmm. And before uh, 220s. We, we will, though. Woohoo! 115. Okay. Son of a... So, Captain, <laughs> you need to roll two successes here, or bad things happen. Unfortunately, that is only one success. No. Bad things happen. So, Matic, unless you dispend your determination here, bad things happen. You guys broke the ship. Can I give determination? Uh, yes, actually, as the captain, it is your ability I, that you can give your mm -hmm. determination to Mr. Matic. Here you go. How do I do that? Do I just give it She's to like, him? here you go. You literally just, you, <laughs> um, mechanically, um, you just give it to him. Yeah. Okay. Nothing better than practical experience? Yeah. And okay. what I would say is that uh, the what you're spending it is to reroll those two zeros. Because you can't yeah. do the two free, uh, two free successes after the roll has been made. Okay. So we're doing no daring way. engineering again. No also, way. everybody, we have hit 120 viewers. So again, what? hi out there in the hi internet. Oh, How are you the doing? Heck? There we go. That looks better. Oh, nice. That oh, looks yeah. significantly Ooh. better. Nice. That even gives us momentum. It uh, does. So that's going to give you a grand total momentum. of two moments of two momentum. Yep, two momentum. So, Matic, you, without even thinking, maybe you just, your fingers dance across the console uh, and the captain, you know, shouting like, get it done, Mr. Matic, you know, something, something inspirational. And immediately um, you're able to cut the feed completely. Uh, however, I am going to spend two threat in that in doing this, a complication has occurred. And that complication is that the lighting of the ship of the Fenrir begins to flicker and spark. And across the entire ship, you have lost primary lighting. Goth. Did you mean to turn that off? Goth as hell. Uh, uh, Mr. Maddox, yes. what's going on? Um, I severed any and all sort of uh, connections that we have to the Pathfinder. Um... In doing so, I think I may have op overloaded a couple uh, conduits that may control the lights. Um, I will get engineering teams on that uh, post haste. Um, but what was that on the hail? Was it trying to get into our ship? Something was try Something was trying to access our systems through that connection. I don't know what that something is. Um, Do we have a recording of this hail that we could reference? Like You would. I would pattern? say it, it was recorded by the computer. 
Uh, but I'm actually going to throw Mr. Rast a bone here. And Mr. Williams, you may assist him as well. Um, Rast, because I let you do a code breaking earlier, I would say that you could roll me an insight security and Williams would do the same. Uh, I would set this at a difficulty of three, um, but I would let your espionage focus apply. And what this task is, is seeing if you can discern any sort of pattern or any sort of intelligence behind what was just transmitted. Going to spend one momentum. Okay. And let's see how this goes. All right, folks. All right, you got the three <gasps> successes you need before Williams even assists you. And it's That's a good thing, too, because unfortunately Williams did not assist. So, Mr. Rast, <clears throat> uh, what you find is that you sort of recognize this transmission code. Um, you have to go back to Voyager days to see it, but uh, this would be the equivalent of the bio neural gel packs, which are present on almost every ship of the Federation. This is the equivalent of a emergent intelligence within those bioneural gel packs. Now, the nature of said emergent intelligence, or if this is actually what is the case, you can't make a complete determination. You would have to go over and manually inspect at least one gel pack to confirm this theory. Uh, he, he will pass this information on to the captain. Um, I believe that we need to get our hands on some of that... Uh some of those gel packs. Um, but I believe that that is what was reaching out to us. An intelligence. Yes. And with that, we have more complications. Um, I, would, I would imagine, but if it's holding Starfleet officers hostage, draining their systems, then we don't have a choice. We have to assist them. I would agree. Is there a way that we can reverse the polarity on the tractor beam and kind of push a path through the asteroids to the Pathfinder? I like the Take way you're thinking. What if we separated the ship and pulled apart the asteroid field that way? Might be faster. I would agree. I mean, we have like six runabouts we could use. What? No, you don't have we six. Do? You, have, you have the one. We have oh, one, we and the then one. we have a type five, and then yeah. like worker bees. We could take yeah. worker bees in and try and board. Wait, we don't even get. Can you even get in worker bees? You can fit two people in there, maybe. <laughs> okay. We may be able to break up the asteroid with weapons fire. Mm, but there's a chance that we miss, or there's a chance that there's. That the ore that we can pick up is hiding a different, is hiding something else that mm -hmm. could, you know, go. I would hate, yeah, I would hate for it to cause a cascade explosion of some sort. Uh, so uh, Rast has already Rast has already stood and uh, started walking toward where he needs to be to uh, control his section. All right, so if I hear correctly, you guys are engaging multi-vector assault mode. We are. Uh, with the intent right. to part the asteroid field, which somehow is suspiciously so close to the Pathfinder. I'm wondering if it's like the asteroid field is sentient or something. Could be. Uh-huh. <laughs> While that's all happening, uh, we sort of cut to an external shot of the ship, and the first thing that happens is the top of the saucer section splits off and begins to bank. Assist mode. Yeah, begins to bank off to the left, and then the, the secondary hull actually splits into two: a upper and lower section of the ship. Uh, and even on the alpha section of the ship, a little uh, nacelle pops up from the hull. So all of you have nacelles on your sections, but you have effectively split the Fenrir into three vessels with the captain commanding Alpha, with Mr. Rast commanding Beta, and then Mr. Williams commanding Gamma. Now, Matic, where would you be uh, among these sections? Um, 
Where is main engineering? Uh, main engineering would be in the gamma section. Yeah, Mac would be on Gamma. Um, however, I think this time he's going to stay on Alpha because he wants to make sure that um, none of the bio neuro packs on the Fenrir have adopted this intelligence and they don't start showing signs of this intelligence. And okay. Alpha would probably have the best it's probably where the computer core would have stayed. Yeah, the computer assumption. core definitely stays with the alpha section, or at least one of the main ones. All right. So uh, just to make sure that we're all on the same page here. So now that you've split the ship into three, your intention is to sort of part a path with the tractor beam to the Pathfinder? Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. Then what that's going to involve is from each section of the ship, I need a uh, a back-to-back -back task here. The first task is going to represent how well you are able to pilot your section of the ship. And that is going to involve a daring and a con task. Uh-oh, Rast. The difficulty... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. The difficulty on this con task will be a three... Uh, but I would say that your section of the ship will assist you with an engines and con. Um, does my helm operations focus fly? It definitely would. Woo! It's going to be a contest between Williams and Rast here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so are we rolling one after another? Uh, it's whichever one of you, one of the sections, wants to go in first. I, I think that's Williams. He's been dying for yeah, a chance yeah, to yeah, prove yeah. himself. Uh, all right, all right, all right. I can't go <laughs> with you guys watching. <laughs> so the gamma section flies a little Ooh. bit ahead and begins uh, pushing uh, rocks out. Wow! Of the What's the the ship? It's engines and con. Engines and con, yeah. And does the ship get a focus? Uh, it always has a focus. Yeah, that's what I thought. Very nice. You even get a momentum out of it. So Mr. Williams, with his masterful helm display, uh, is not only able to begin shaving off the exterior layer of the, the rocks that separate you from the Pathfinder, uh, but he does so with a flourish, like maybe even just causing the ship to do an Aerion roll, like not the barrel roll, because that's the other way, but, you know, the, the Star Fox thing where, you know, it spins in a circle. He's doing it fancy, is what I'm trying to get at He's here. He's doing it fancy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say that that is a good start for Gamma. Now, you have the option of Gamma continuing on the path, and you would move to a tractor beam task, or you can have another ship come in and do the same task that Williams just did. Uh, okay. Rast is on Theta. Mm -hmm. What's your... It's daring and con, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's your scores? Uh, my my con is a four. My daring is an eight. Okay, I have nine and four. That would be you. So, and Maddox, I don't think, I think you have. My con is a one. Okay. Mm -hmm. I build ships. I don't fly them. So, can I use composure? I would say yes. You're trying to keep your cool under pressure. There is a lot of floating debris out there, and you'd like to not scratch the paint. Mm-hmm. Uh, Captain? Yes? Can I recommend that you use your determination? Yeah. Okay. And um, I, will, I, I, I will... I got more of that? <laughs> oh, she already spent it. Yeah, Never she mind. Just gave it, she gave it to Maddie. She did give it away, uh, but uh, it. I think I know you use your milestone? I was going to say, you could use your milestone. Um, but I also believe, and I'm looking it up because I want to be extra sure on this, as first officer, uh, there is something special you do. Yes, I could spend three momentum. For what? To give determination to give back. give determination back. That's, a, that's costly. But it's two successes. Mm -hmm. How much momentum do we have? Three at the three. moment. Three. I'll defer to the crew. What do you want to do? 
Yeah, we'll let the, we'll let the captain go for it. Prove her metal. Uh, yeah, I say do it. Might want to okay. spend him a momentum for at least the third die. Yeah, just get else. the just get the extra. Just use one momentum. Okay. Uh. So am I rolling three? Yep. Okay. Ooh, unfortunately, um, one success there. Well, the chip assist too. Uh, yeah. Is there a way I can assist by boosting something with power or power systems? I will say you can assist, but there will be a complication that you cannot buy off with momentum. Mm, what's the worst that can happen? What am I rolling? Do it. I mean, All right, you're rolling a uh, daring and engineering. We were all here the last time. We know how bad it can get. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. uh, oh, I'm just rolling the one dice, too. Mm-hmm. I uh, power systems or prototype engineering power systems because you're managing the engines and the tractor beam in careful balance. Awesome. All right, there's one success from Matic, which means the ship needs to roll a uh, below a fourteen on this one. I'm gonna roll Good engines con. Yes. Um, Captain, are you doing it or? You can do it. Sure. Or do you want me? Do you want me to? Uh, I'll take the blame. Fuck it. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, hey guys, I'm headed out. I'll, uh... <laughs> okay. So here's can what you I take the threat. I'll, I'll, no, I'll, I'll no, I'm gonna take the complication on this one because there's two here. There's also that, yeah. Oh boy. So, oh fuck. Here's what happens, <laughs> Captain. You very politely take over the con. You don't kick your con officer out, but you maybe suggest that you're gonna take the, the helm here. We could have had our con officer do this. And fuck. The alpha section of the Fenrir. Uh, slides over, well not slides, but flies over to another part of the asteroid field and begins to try and project its tractor beam uh, to push the rocks out of the way. And that's when the first bad thing happens. And that bad thing is, you remember how during first session we made a joke about how the bridge had problems with ceiling panels? <laughs> One of those panels has just fallen onto your head. And I'm oh, going to say perfect. you have a minor concussion <laughs> until someone does a medical task on you. And if that wasn't bad enough, as Matic, as you are rerouting power systems, you hear the crash of the ceiling panel. And you turn to look, and your finger slips. And this time, the power across of all of Alpha Section dies instantly you have cut off main power from the entire alpha section of the ship oh, so in such a way that even the running lights go out so everybody else so rast and williams you know you're piloting your own section of the ship and you just see yeah. alpha go and just sort of spin <laughs> just spin slowly through space it's a dead spin like yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so what is the follow-up task that i can do with my gamma <laughs> <laughs> well, so um, we could just we'll have to do the tractor beam task on alpha section now as opposed to mm -hmm. All right. I'm rolling for the ship from now on <laughs> I'll roll for the ship alright so Rast what is it you want to do exactly oh, what were the alright so there were there was an option for alpha to go in and do what they were doing but there was another option yes the other option was that gamma just continues to push the rocks and that would be a tractor beam task, which is a different set of attributes and disciplines. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to pull, I'm going to fly over and try to pull Alpha away from the asteroids. Okay. I don't need them to get into any more trouble. That's true. And actually, while, while he's doing that, I'm actually going to try to raise Alpha section <clears throat> but I guess it'll fail because they're completely without power. Mm -hmm. So I'll try to raise beta section. 
Yeah, um, continue, continue trying to do what you're doing there, uh, Commander Williams. Uh, I'm going to rescue Alpha. <laughs> Roger that. Be careful. You're doing you're doing a fine job. So let's have you both roll this. Uh, Let's have let's start with beta. So Rast, uh, this is going to be a control and a security, and beta section will assist you with a structure security. The difficulty on this is a two. Okay. And uh, Williams and Gamma are going to do the same task, but let's resolve beta first. And is this a um, a helm operations thing? Uh, no, this is a tractor beam. Unfortunately. Oh, okay. No worries then. And then the beta section assists with what? Structure security. Okay. Come on, you dumb ship. <laughs> In before another complication. Oh, no, yes. two successes. So, yes, the beta section under RAST guidance comes in uh, up next to the alpha section, locks it in a tractor beam. And stabilizes the spin so that it's no longer just dead spinning through space. <laughs> and while that's going on, uh, if I could get the same rolls of a control security and a structure security from Gamma section. Sure. Uh, I'm going to spend a moment to get an extra die. Okay. Um, and so I know Helm operations doesn't apply here. Would shipboard tactical systems? It would because the tractor beam actually counts as a tactical system. Nice. All right, two and... successes. Ooh, get get us that momentum it. back, baby. And it's structure and security for the ship. You got it. With the focus. That's nice. Survey says you get a yeah. momentum right back. And yeah, what I would say is that you have made a significant dent in the asteroid field such that it now looks a little bit like this. So you haven't quite freed the Pathfinder, but you've definitely opened up a gap. Uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll, I'll come to Rask and say, uh, Gamma to Beta, uh, it's slow going here, Commander, but I think we could do it. Pike, uh, I'll head over to assist as soon as I uh, secure the the captain's section. Yeah, maybe um, maybe lock Alpha onto Beta. You know, keep him out of trouble. Not a bad not a bad call. I, I'm just glad their power is down so they can't hear our conversation. <laughs> So let's let's on the subject of conversation, Captain. You have just been hit on the head. Your head is ringing. Yeah. And, oh, uh, she's awake. Okay. Oh yeah, you're still awake. You're just very out of it. Uh, okay, she's probably sitting down, trying to avoid standing up because it hurts. Mm -hmm. So, um, Maddie, don't you have medical training? Yeah. Yeah, was, you have a one. What are you talking about? You have a one in medicine. <laughs> I but, used to have medic training, and then I was like, you know what? I think science would be a much better idea. No. Oh, dear. And the best part is, is that Saniri, Savia, Alel, they're in beta section. <laughs> the main sick bay. Uh-huh. So what I would say uh, is that right now, your options for treating the captain are Relosh, Matic, or uh, I can have one of you guys, or I can roll for Mr. Black. But I think uh, Matthew Black, I mean, he's got a two. I think uh, I think the that's, lieutenant's going to have to come in handy here. All righty. Um, let's see. What's our helm officer? Relosh has a one, unfortunately, so she's probably not much help. But now that I look at Mr. Black's focuses, he has survival, which I would apply here. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and I will do the rolling for this. He has a focus. Unfortunately, oh, uh, Mr. Black gets like the bridge uh, medical kit and starts trying to treat the captain. He's not making very good progress. In fact, uh, 
he maybe even makes it a little worse. Like, Captain, your vision is starting to blur a little bit. Um, stop doing so, whatever you're doing. Sorry, Captain. I, I thought I was... The dermal regenerator should have just been sealing up the wound. I Sorry. Go help uh, Maddox. I'm going to do my best to pull Alpha away from the asteroids so I can get them away from the interference. Okay. And as I have no communications with them, mm -hmm. uh, um, and their power is completely down, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to temporarily drop shields and transport LL over. Mm. Just because I don't know what's going on over there. Right. Okay. So what I would say here is that this will require a transporter task. And I'm going to say that there is an increased complication range because of the window between shields going down and you beaming over. Um, so let's walk through this. So this would be a control engineering. Uh, this would be assisted by the ship's sensors engineering, which if I recall correctly, you guys have advanced sensors. So the difficulty goes down to a one. You are transporting into alpha section without power, which means you're not transporting to an active pad. So that goes up to difficulty two, but that's the extent of increase in complication or increase in difficulty. Now the complication range is what's important. So the complication range here is going to be a 16 to 20. Um, but otherwise, it's just a control engineering assisted by the ship's sensors engineering. Difficulty of two. Um, can Matic try to do some engineering magic and get a little bit of power back up? I would say perhaps, but let's resolve this task first. Uh, Rast runs the numbers real quick and decides that he is going to wait to see uh, what's if they can get any sort of response from the alpha section. Okay. Uh, he is going to run a full sensor, uh, sensor sweep on the alpha section just to make sure that, you know, there are still the correct amount of life signs. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, what I would say is uh, something that uh, we have to be aware of is that even though you guys have split up your main characters across all the ships, you all would still have competent crewmen uh, mm -hmm. available to you. Um, what I would say for beta section is you would have access to actually Jensen in this in this aspect. So no. <laughs> you could roll for Jensen here. <laughs> He's actually got a very nice control engineering. Oh my god. For real. All right, you know what? We're we're going to uh <clears throat> we're going to get Ensign Jensen in on this. All right. So, Mr. Rast, if you could roll for Ensign Jensen again, that is a control like engineering. And It's like uh, Mary and Pippin. He just makes things back. <laughs> like uh, control engineering, right? Correct. Difficulty two, right. and the ship does assist you with sensors engineering. And is there a way to uh, do this uh, wonderful cheerleading thing that the captain did before? Ah, uh, I would allow it, yes. <coughs> so Rast himself could assist with presence command. All right, so let's do the presence command first. Okay. And that's just one die. Mm-hmm. Um... As much as I'd like to argue persuasion, I'm not going to. Um, but what does um, augmented ability presence do? Oh, so that's uh, something we need to keep aware of in the future. We've been doing it wrong. Um, every time you all do, or at least anyone with augmented ability presence, which I think the captain has as well, mm -hmm. um, you both would start with one free success automatically on any presence task nice uh the trade-off on that is okay. that your complication range is 18 to 20. all right all right so let's do uh do this this and that okay so you're at two successes at the moment okay and then let's do uh ensign jensen here with his engineering Control. Mm -hmm. And he has two dice and no focus because he's a loser. <laughs> All right. You're at three successes and one complication. Now All let's right. see what the ship rolls. And then the ship rolls what? The ship is rolling a sensors engineering. All right. 
sensors engineering. And yes. Oh, look at all that. That is good. Yeah, that's so that's a total of five Christmas. successes. So you get three momentum. But if you give me two of that three, you can get rid of that complication. Here, have two. <laughs> all right. So you get a grand total of one extra momentum from this task. And yes, what happens is the shields come down. You beam Alel over. And then the shields come right back up. And probably not a moment too soon. Uh, on the bridge, Alel, you arrive with medkit in hand, ready to see an injured captain. And I will give you an extra momentum if you talk to yourself in the scene. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> captain. We broke her, guys. We okay. Broke her. Um... <laughs> people, people, say, people say we sound the same. I don't hear it. Uh, I avoid I avoid this at all costs in full play, but um I just see some steam coming out of her headset. Um she yep. she goes over to the captain who is sitting against a bulkhead, clutching her head, and she kneels down, uh, opens the tri her medical tricorder and begins scanning her and she says, What happened? Mm -hmm. the captain says, uh the ceiling fell on my head. We lost power. How did you get over here? And she says, I don't know. I got transported. She starts scanning her. Okay. So, Alel, because we have activated her as a supporting character, you may choose to augment her in some way. Uh, now, the task is going to be just to reason medicine. Um, but in terms of augmenting her, you could raise an attribute by one. You could raise a discipline by one. You could give her a talent. You could give her a focus, or you give her a value. I can give her a value? If you gave her a value, she would be able to use determination. Do I have to do that right now? Unfortunately, yes. Uh, so I get to basically pick a value right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't have a list Should to look at. Should definitely be no like a medical-related value. And because uh, it is a supporting character in the moment, I don't mind if it's specifically related to this sort of check. So something along the lines of... Um, keep my crew members healthy. Yeah, that would work. Yeah. What about... Leave no Above one behind? Above all, do no harm. Do no harm, leave no one behind, all good ones. Do no harm. That's her. We'll do that. All right. Let me add that. Which okay. may become important if we continue rolling 20s. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm rolling... Reason what Medicine. Again? Reason Medicine. Two? Yep. Unless you want to spend momentum for more. Nah. Two successes is all you Ooh. need. And yes, the good news is that uh, Mr. Black's, uh, shall we say, uh, indiscretion... Uh, did not actually harm the captain. Uh, no harm was done. And with Alel doing her best medical uh, in the field, uh, she is able to get the captain in fighting shape once more. Now, Captain, you're still a little bit woozy, maybe a little bit lightheaded, but uh, you definitely don't have a gash in your forehead anymore. Your head's not throbbing like you have a migraine. You can actually think and otherwise begin giving orders again. Okay. Uh, so just thank you, LL. Uh, is there anyone else hurt on the bridge? I mean, there are other injuries, which she could, you know, kind of off camera start. Managing. Okay. I'm going to order her to do that. Um, and then she's going to go over to where Maddox is and assist him and hopefully restoring power so they can let the other two ships know what's going on. Okay. So, Matic, uh, while this has all been going on, you've been staring at uh, what remain, what you know, little power is left in your console. I'd like you to roll me an insight engineering, please, at a difficulty of two. Um, I'm assuming my power system's focus applies still. <laughs> I don't know how that would apply. Yes, 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 it would. <laughs> <laughs> if not, um, I'll definitely argue alien technology. I'll give you power assistance. Uh, da -da -da -da. 
Difficulty two. Difficulty two. I feel like spend I should one. spend momentum because just, just, I've just been. Yeah. I could see it in your face. My hard just, work. Just. <laughs> just like yet another ceiling tile drops on the captain's head. <laughs> Can I just RP between myself the whole session? We get, like, Actually, no, I don't need to spend up. momentum. I don't need to spend momentum. I get a free D20. Oh. Because I'm trying to determine what's wrong with the ship. You do indeed. Uh, because I, I know how to build a character. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, power gamer. Best part is, is that's not even the super. Wow. Oh, wow. that is five successes, which means you get capped momentum. You have hit cap for the first time in this game. Very nice. Uh, great. So you, pull, you pull it out in a big way. It's good. Good job. So Matic, uh, with that many successes, what you find is that you remember that burst that came from the Pathfinder earlier. Um, it seems that when you came in and you started tractor beaming the asteroids out of the way, there was resonance feedback through the tractor beam, which then sort of caused your warp core, the dilithium and the, the uh, deuterium uh, to sort of resonate. And as a emergency procedure, like automatic procedure, the warp core shut down. Now you can spin the warp core back up, no problem, but it is a 30 minute process to do so. Okay. Um, do we have, like, did I restore any sort of power or we're just dead in space? Uh, I would say life support is at least functional, but main power is offline for sure. So right now you're running off of secondary reactors. Okay. I mean, like, do we have like communications, minimum thrusters, or literally it's just we're alive. That's it. Give me a momentum and you will have all of those things. Yeah. Mine as well. We're capped. (laughs) just got it all right and (laughs) sure enough on uh, beta and gamma sections you are now seeing that alpha is communicating once more does Um, it fix the ceiling it does not fix the ceiling unfortunately i'm gonna give uh i'm gonna give alpha a shove with a tractor beam you know hoping that momentum just carries them away from the asteroids uh because i gotta get in there and help gamma okay um Matic will kind of, whoever's in charge of engineering on both sections, they'll both get a quick little like, hey, this is what's going on. Uh, the whole breakdown and just to watch warp core, make sure shit doesn't break down for y'all too. And uh, Matic's next job will be to try to restore at least the shields. Okay. Using that information, uh, as much as I hate to give Jensen an assignment, Mm -hmm. Uh, He is going to uh, try to build some sort of containment, um, sort of like a a firewall, per se, uh, based on the information that Maddox has provided. Interesting. Interesting. I actually have this somewhere in my notes. Just give me a moment. I've got to find where I wrote it. So uh, this quote unquote firewall. I would say that this would involve a reason engineering and the difficulty would be a three, but this firewall is something that Jensen could do. And in fact, looking at Jensen, uh, this would relate to his power supplies focus. That's what I was thinking. So he actually is rolling a 15 with a focus. That's actually rather good for Mr. Jensen. I think that's, and, that's probably the highest a supporting character can go right out of the bat. All right. So I think I think we got all of the things. He's, how many successes does he need? Uh, he needs three here. So you probably still want to spend some momentum. Oh, yeah. We're going to we're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, as much as uh, as much as people don't like spending it, we're going to spend it. Um, we're just going to spend the one. OK. So reason engineering, mm-hmm. three dice, and focus. And the ship helps or no? Uh, the ship would not help with this, unfortunately. Okay. This is purely whether Jensen is creative. All right. Almost. Almost. Uh, I will offer you a compromise. This will succeed at cost, but I'm going to get two threat for it. Deal. Deal. 
All right, so Jensen uh, very happily reports, uh, Sir, I have enacted a sort of a firewall around our power conduits. Uh, might be a little bit of an issue when we connect back up to the other parts of the ship, but for the moment, beta, beta section is good to go, sir. Pass that information off to Matic. Um, maybe he can improve upon it and uh, pass the information off to the other sections. Aye, sir. Thank you, Jensen. Good job. That's something I thought I'd never say. He doesn't yeah. say that on top. <laughs> bonding. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, I'm looking at the time. Let's take our 10-minute break here, and we will be back uh, at 1040-ish. Uh, so yeah, let me switch us to the BRB screen. And on a quick note, hey, thanks all these people that are. Yeah, I was gonna say yes. again, thanks everybody <laughs> for uh, showing in. You are blowing my new, my usual viewership out of the water. So thanks for being here. Hopefully you're having a good time, and we'll be back in a bit. All right. Thank you. 
right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back Hello. from our break. And uh, we're still at above 100, which is a new experience for me. So, uh, hi, 100 people. I'm not nervous at all. Uh, so let's uh, let's dive right back in. So uh, during the break, uh, I threw my players a bone, and I basically said that they were able, between Beta and Gamma, they were able to completely clear the asteroid field away from the USS Pathfinder, the ship that they had been uh, responding to a distress call from. And during this whole clearing process, Alpha has restored one power, which is important because one power enables shields to come back up, enables um, impulse power, you know, tasks that would involve actual power expenditures. Um, but that's where we drop back into things. You are still split up. The ship is still in three sections and I'm going to turn it over to you players. <clears throat> Captain, we've, uh, we've cleared a, we've cleared a path to the pathfinder. Uh, how, how is, uh, alpha section doing? We, uh, have restored auxiliary power but not full power quite yet um i um had a, the ceiling fall on my head so that was fun i'm glad we were able to get ll over i had a feeling when you guys lost power you might need her yeah uh, your uh empathic abilities come in handy and so did ensign jensen I'll be eager to read your report on that. <laughs> uh, are you able to uh, use a, a tractor beam on the Pathfinder? Uh, we're we're going to uh, we're gonna we're gonna figure out our options now. Okay. At, at this point, I think Williams would cut in and say, "Is this still a viable option with only true tractor beams? If only auxiliary power has been restored in the Alpha section, where?" down to two-thirds tractor beam strength, essentially. Uh, Matic would kind of chime in. Um, something you could try to do is uh, one ship, whichever one feels more confident, um, I would say have one ship uh, kind of do bursts of pulling it with a tractor beam, and then the other section do a uh, equalizing... Um, The, the the English for it I forget the pushing aspect the repulsion repuls yeah that one <laughs> that word I'm, I'm glad I could engineer for you Maddox <laughs> yeah I mean uh, I think we could I think we could try that you know if only I had a chief engineer in engineering uh, you well, have Mr. Hale Oh, this is... so uh, just oh, robot. just for usage purposes, uh, what what are the roles for both uh, for both uh, activities? Well, I'm glad you asked because this is where I get to introduce the new players to a new type of mechanic. So this is going to be what is called an extended task. Now, oh, no. an extended task is a little bit different from a regular task in that you don't automatically succeed by getting these successes on a task. So, for example, this is going to be a control and an engineering task, which means whoever attempts this task is going to be rolling control engineering. The difficulty on this starts at a four, which means you need four successes to start. Now, should you get those four successes, you would then roll challenge dice to represent how much work you have done towards this extended test. Basically, how successful is it really over time? Then, uh, we compare this value, the work done, to how many breakthroughs you need. And if you remember how in combat there was that rule of five, if you do five or more work, or if you complete the work track you achieve a breakthrough. And a breakthrough is important because it lowers the difficulty of the task and it's one step closer to finishing the task. So uh, I'm gonna type this all out, but verbally I will say, 
that your work track, the amount of work, the number of challenge die you would need to roll here is a 10. The starting difficulty, uh, I'm actually going to make a 3 instead of a 4 because I want this to be a good first experience with extended tasks. And the magnitude, how many breakthroughs you need, is also only going to be a 3. And the default task for this is a control engineering. And it can be anyone on beta or gamma section. So conceivably, you could get Jensen to do this. What you got for me, Rast? Uh, I'm going to, uh, I, I figure that we can go in with uh, myself and Ensign Jensen um, and see what we can do about helping push, push her out. What do you think, Commander Williams? Do you have any? Uh, do you have? Do you have anyone on on your ship uh, more capable than Mr. Jensen? God, I hope so. He's actually uh, done quite admirably today. Well, I'm gonna have to take your word on that, sir. I'm uh, on uh, comms. I can hear everything you two are saying. But uh, you know, <laughs> uh, between him, between him and Hale, I think we should be able to get this taken care of. I, out of character, I want to give Jensen a shot at it just because mm -hmm. I think it'd be really cool if Jensen comes out the hero today. I, I yeah, would think okay. it's cool, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm 100% on board with that. All right. All right, so William, since you haven't been doing a whole lot of rolling, let's have you roll for Jensen. Oh, good. And can I do the cheerleading again? You may do the cheerleading. All right. All right, Jensen. Good old presence. And it's control engineering, you said? Control engineering. The difficulty to start is a three. And that's presence command, right? For you, yes. Yeah. Um, and can I roll, uh, or can I spend a momentum to get an extra die? Oh, hell yeah. 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 Right, cool. And I get an automatic yeah. success with the presence. Mm -hmm. um, does Jensen's... Any of Jensen's focuses apply. He's got quantum slipstream technology, power supplies, and antimatter technology. Yes. In fact, one of them will apply, and should he succeed, I will flavor it appropriately. Okay. So he starts off with three successes. Good job, Jensen. Rass has achieved an additional two, so you get two momentum. Now, uh, because he has succeeded, uh, we now roll challenge die to see how much work you do. So it's two plus Jensen's engineering, so you're rolling six challenge die. That's all you, all right. Mr. Williams. All right. You're roll six. Okay, now uh, what I would say is you can spend one momentum to re-roll those three zeros if you so wish. Uh, yeah, we got, okay. we got we'll enough of them. Let's spend one. Yeah. Okay, so let's roll three more. Okay, well, this is important because with five total work done, you achieve a breakthrough. And what happens is beta section, under the masterful piloting of Mr. Rast, uh, is able to actually sort of get behind, or at least partially behind, the Pathfinder. And right on cue, Jensen begins a alternating or maybe even oscillating pulse of the tractor beam to begin gently nudging the pathfinder uh, out into open space and i kind of i kind of picture the beta section since we're three-dimensional mm -hmm. um like barrel rolling and going up and around and like pushing pushing the pathfinder yeah i like it i like it a lot uh i'll give you momentum for the free description i love it uh so you push Thanks. yeah you push the pathfinder maybe about to there uh with your work and uh it is at this point that you have five work <clears throat> remaining the difficulty is only a two and the magnitude is only a two so basically same thing you can have jensen roll again you could have somebody else roll but uh this is this is sort of to represent a a well, literally an extended task where oh, we, yeah. we Jensen's would normally... definitely rolling. Yeah. He might even end up with an accommo uh, a, a common, uh, accommodation after this. So. I'm sure he would be thrilled with such an award. Yeah. So you got uh, Jensen there, yep. Mr. Williams. Uh, I've got him. 
I'll cheerlead him as much as I can with my uh, no successes and a complication. Ooh, okay. So that's, my one success. It is one success, but it is a complication. All right. Why? Oh, oh, okay. So this is good. This is actually a good <laughs> thing because Jensen did not succeed. Your assist rast actually doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Um, he, you, so I don't, I don't think I've mentioned this in order for an assist roll to count. The main character has to roll at least one success. Okay. Um, so effectively what happens is that, uh, nothing bad happens. You just sort of lose time here. And time is something I'd remind you of because when we started this whole affair, the pathfinder mm -hmm. had about three hours remaining that's now down to about 30 minutes and every one of these attempts is taking 15 minutes yeah, now we, we've got to try at least once more right now what i would yeah. say is before you do the roll for the next attempt you can spend one momentum to cut that time in half so it only take eight or seven and a half minutes um so that would give you more time here but time is a factor uh, yeah, we'll we'll spend the one. Okay. And then we should spend one for Jensen. Okay. All right. Here we go. And I give him two extra. Okay. All he has to do is get one. Yeah, Come all on. he has to do is get you the one. Yes! Nice. Very nice. So you get two momentum. And go ahead and roll me six challenge die. Very nice. Oh, Five oh, is all you need. Wow. So uh, <clears throat> Jensen uh, is not only able to uh, masterfully sort of repulse uh, the Pathfinder out to open space, maybe about to hear, uh, but you remember how I said the Gamma section was being all fancy earlier? Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Rast, how fancy do you want to be? Um, Like... Oh, so yeah. So as it's as it's uh, coming out, um, Rast is going to then like peel off and bank off to the side, uh, l letting loose a couple of the pulses out into the air, just so uh, just so it looks kind of cool. Very nice. <laughs> With Blair, mm -hmm. just like cut to the bridge of Gamma section, and Blair's just like, yeah. uh, and and Rast <laughs> thinks to himself, "I have finally found a use for Jensen's repulsiveness." <laughs> take a momentum take a momentum you glorious bastard all right well the good news is uh you've got 45 minutes or no what did i say you have 45 no it was 30 so <laughs> 22 23 and a half yeah you've got no. about 22 minutes but the good news is you can just start transporting them out because they are out of the asteroid field and that is what we're going to start yep. doing. Absolutely. Okay. Beta, so beta, beta and gamma. And gamma. Yep. Right, well, cool. if there's an intelligent life in the biomimetic, not biomimetic, bioneural, bioneural gel, dropping shields might not be a smart idea. We are going to in the so with the beta section since mm -hmm. since we're since we have the medical bay. Mm -hmm. and those types of things as well. Um, and we've already set up the firewall. Um, we're going to set up, uh, I don't, uh, and I'll tell Williams, I don't think we should take anybody on the gamma. I think we should uh, beam everybody directly into medical quarantine. Agreed. We'll, we'll post a guard. All right. And then, um, then we're going to start. Uh, so beta is just going to, uh, take the responsibility of bringing on, I believe it was 40 some. 46. Yeah. And uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll throw things together real quick. We're going to set up a um, impromptu uh, medical quarantine in one of the shuttle bays. One of the shuttle bays. All right. Let me. Nice. Yeah. Little triage. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have to do, we're going to have to do something because that many people aren't going to fit in medical facilities. All right. Is there a holodeck? Ah, uh, there is. You could use a holodeck, uh, but let's go with the shuttle bay because that's the one I'm starting to drop tokens on. Okay. I think the shuttle bay is <laughs> probably best too because if it's something that uh, can infect the power systems, 
hollow. <laughs> we know how bad <laughs> hollow deck uh, uh, possession can be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very true. Very All true. Right. So we are going to give Rast a little bit of screen time here as we cut to the cargo bay slash shuttle bay of beta section. And uh, when you walk in Rast, you see that there are people lying on either blankets or hasty beds that have been erected. And Commander Saneri and and Savia Maddock, along with several other medical personnel, are doing their best to triage the injuries. And uh, when you walk in, uh, Saneri actually comes up to you, Commander, and says, uh, Commander, we have two very cognizant doctors that want to get the attention of either you or the captain immediately. All right, uh, I'll, I'll talk to them, uh, and uh, I'll I'll uh, loop I'll conference call in the captain. Very good, sir. Uh, it is those two over there, and she motions at Doctor Vimia and Doctor Karas, who you do not know yet, but will shortly. All right, so Rasta uh, opens up uh, the com, uh, Captain. I'm going to be speaking to doctors from. The Pathfinder, I believe that uh, having you present, uh, at least in spirit, is a good thing. Thank you. All right. So, as you approach uh, Dr. Vermia, uh, Vermia is a little bit interesting. Um, I've sort of stolen her artwork from Star Trek Beyond, so we don't really know what her species is. But if you will imagine uh, a humanoid with uh, almost cascading ridges that emanate out from their ears to form almost like a shell-like structure on the top of their head. Uh, their skin is a much more pronounced pink and purple color than it would be, say, a human flesh color. Uh, the other doctor is very easy to describe. She is an Andorian female. And both of these doctors are wearing the rank of a lieutenant commander. Doctor, you, uh, you wanted to speak to us. I have the captain on comms. And this is Dr. Vermeer who speaks first. She says, ah, yes. Um, Did you, do, is the planetoid still out there? We did not see a planetoid. Damn, that means it's gotten into the nebula already. Uh, there seems to have been some sort of contamination um, in your, uh, he would remember the name of it because I cannot right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your uh, bio. Bio neural gel pack. Bioneuro gel packs. And uh, strangely, the doctor uh, doesn't seem to care about this tidbit. In fact, she seems very focused on one particular thing. She says, I, that that doesn't matter. What, what matters is that planetoid. We have to get back there. And it's at this point that Dr. Karos, the Andorian, says, now, now, doctor. Let's, let's indulge the commander a little bit. He doesn't know what's at stake here. What is on the planetoid that is so important to you? Well, we found the hints. We, we weren't able to land on the planetoid yet, but we found the hints that there might have been an advanced civilization that lived on that asteroid. Very well. And... Uh Oh, go ahead, sorry. What can you tell me about what happened with your ship and your crew? That, I'm unfortunately, I don't know. One moment we were running scans using the entire Pathfinder sensor array on the, pl the planetoid. The next thing I know, main power's out, red alerts blaring, and we were told to either evac to the bridge, main engineering, or uh, the mess hall. And she sort of motions around at all the injuries in the sick bay. Well, the the make do sick bay. She says, uh, pretty much everyone I'm seeing here is uh, from main engineering, including ourselves. These are the only ones that we receive life signs from on your ship. I and I, I am sorry to uh, pass that information on to you. And Captain, did you have any questions? Go ahead. You said uh, you have your engineering crew here. Uh, some of them, yes. Do you have your chief engineer? Kara sort of looks around, sort of scans the room. Uh, no, I am uh, not seeing Mr. Jefferson. Any engineering deputies that we could talk to? 
And actually, Commander Rast, uh, I would say at this point, you're looking around. All of the uniform colors of the Survivor are blue. And as a reminder, blue does not mean mm -hmm. engineering. It means medical and science. Everyone here, uh, Captain, is science or medical personnel. Okay, out of character. Did I hear that wrong then? I thought that we transported engineering people we, into the They were, these people were in main, main engineering. Okay. But that's where they evac to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, oh, go ahead. Savia wants to, uh, Savia, uh, I want to run a scan on the, at least the other Andorian woman, mm -hmm. um, to see if there's anything unusual with her. Uh, brainwaves, see if it's alien takeover kind of thing. Fair question. Uh, this will be a reason medicine <laughs> at a difficulty of two. I'm also going to take the time because the doctor uh, Vima here is kind of throwing me off. So I'm going to uh, be kind of getting a feeling from her. Okay. Spending, uh, spending some time, uh, Figuring out how she's so composed. Okay. Uh, you are going to be rolling in Insight and Con, also at a difficulty of two. Um, natural medicines wouldn't apply. That'd be the only thing I could think of. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, none of Savia's focuses would apply here. And uh, I got behavioral analysis, so I'm assuming that's... That'll most definitely apply. <laughs> uh, do y'all mind if I spend a dice for Savio? I say spend it. Go for it. it. I'm not going to spend it, so you can spend it. Ugh. All right, so I'm going to take the two threat. So, uh, unfortunately, Rast, you get nothing from Vemia, which is odd. Like, normally you get at least the inkling of uh -huh. something. It's almost like you're trying to read a Ferengi. You get nothing. Um, okay. Now, Savia, uh, when Savia scans Dr. Karas, uh, she discovers two very important items. Uh, the first item is that Karas is actually part Anar, uh, which, if I have my Endorian yeah. species correct, uh -huh. uh, are the white-colored telepathic ones. The telepathic ones, mm -hmm. yeah. Crazy. The second item, which is probably a relief, is that there does not appear to be any controlling factor messing with the doctor. Okay. Um, somebody's got a clock running. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear, tick, tick. Huh. What's, what are you smiling about? What's who smiling about? You. Me or him? Yeah, you, Maddox. I have... <laughs> uh, I'm kind of... Do they... How many people would you say are in here? Like, rough estimate. Out of the 46 life signs that were found? Oh, they're all here. They're all here. All 46 of them? All 46. And, like, Gamma didn't, or Gamma didn't pick up anybody? Yeah. We didn't take anybody. Um, yeah, that definitely shoots off little red flags. Um, Their only science and medical is left. And 46 of them, if the crew comment was 150, you would assume each section would probably receive a, you would have a third engineering, third medical, third operations and all the other stuff. So, yeah, you're not even seeing red uniforms here. They're all blue. Well, of course, all the Richards died. <laughs> um. <laughs> can, in the, can, we scan the Pathfinder's logs for when they fudge the records? Um, right now, I would say by this point, the Pathfinder's entire power supply has gone dark. 
So yeah. somebody would have to go over and restore okay. power. So it is possible you could send a team over to restore power, but otherwise the Pathfinder is dead in the water. Okay. Um, if Captain brings it up to uh, Matic, he'll probably say, uh, I would probably want to take a uh, portable battery system um, and then I would probably try to DMZ and isolate all the uh, whatever I decide to plug into. Um, last thing we really need is if these if their bio neural bio neural gel, uh, gel packs um, are in some way infected, for lack of a better term. Um, bringing that infection back and placing it back with how placing it back on our ship would just leave two ships dead in the water and I mean I don't think Starfleet would be too, exactly too happy about that and to make it even more difficult of a decision for the captain Dr. Vemia insists once again listen we don't have a lot of time here we have to get to that planetoid before it breaks up Otherwise, and our you're whole purpose that... out here is meaningless. Why don't you describe your purpose out here? Well, we were on a pathfinding mission when we detected the gravimetric anomaly of this planetoid passing through nearby space. Uh, maybe I'm not clear here. Maybe I should elucidate you further. I'm not talking like some random warp civilization that we've not had contact with. I'm talking Takan level uh, installations on that planetoid. Jada character, uh, the Takan are the ones that make uh, stellar transporters that literally transport entire planets, entire stars. It's kind of a big deal. Hmm. So I'm guessing their orders were to the point of a la Discovery where the, the Starfleet at any cost wanted the Spore Drive. That's like um, I would say it's not, they weren't specifically sent out here to find that sort of thing. This is just something that they've happened on and is very important to follow up on. Okay. Well, and so this is in character. Mm -hmm. Doctor, we have a hundred people dead. I understand your mission is important, but we need to get some clarity on how that happened. And I can't risk my crew by going after this planetoid without knowing exactly what happened to the rest of your people. But I'm simply not going to do it. Captain, I mean this with all due respect. If we do not act within the hour, all those deaths will have been meaningless. The planetoid will have broken up completely. And we could all be dead by the time we're done. That's the risk we take when we're Starfleet. I get to decide that risk and I'm not putting my crew at risk like that until we can shed some light on what happened. And I suggest that you help us do that. I'd like you to roll me a presence command difficulty of two. Now I assist her. If you can describe how you're assisting, because remember <clears throat> she's conference calling in. Um, I'm, uh, well, I do have Just a focus. looking real mean. I do have shake a focus. Your, shake I'll, your fist. I do have a focus in persuasion. Okay. And, uh, I am going to, uh, basically tell them that, you know, this is your only avenue. Uh, if only if you are forthcoming with us, the captain will not sacrifice people willy nilly. Fair. I'll let it happen. I have, a, I have a focus in Starfleet protocols. That would definitely apply here. That was presence command. Yep. From both of you. Nice. So that's four successes from the captain, two successes from Rast for a total of six for four momentum, which means you have three floating. Now, this is important because, I again, this is the first time we've ever had more momentum than cap. So here's what happens with floating momentum. If you do not spend it immediately, that momentum vanishes so you still go up to six momentum total but the three over the cap go away so what you normally want to do is either ask questions one momentum per question or what is probably relevant to this scene 
is you spend two momentum to create an advantage. Now, this advantage can be, I would say, let me flavor it this way. The advantage is basically you as players injecting your own little GM-ness into the scene. Like, you can basically declare something in the narrative that nine times out of ten, I'm going to say, yeah, we're going to do that. Uh, but you basically declare something in the narrative that would help you in some way. Uh, Dr. Karras uh, sees that this is kind of be there between a rock and a hard place. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, you know, trying to not be forthright with the captain is not going to reach their goals. So she uh, leans over to the to the other doctor and uh, starts to whisper to her that they need to be forthright if they're going to get anything out of this situation. Very nice. Uh, all right. So what I would say is that Karis, of course, does this. And Vemya, uh, her face almost falls uh, as Karis, you know, tries to communicate this fact to her. And Vemya says, all right, fine. I will tell them. And she looks very pointedly at you, Rast. Uh, almost locks eyes with you, almost unblinking. And says, all right, look. What happened was we started scanning the planetoid. Next thing we knew, all the engineering crew were going mad. I don't know what was wrong with all of them. They just started hitting the walls, hitting each other, tearing out conduits. Something went wrong. And we tried coming up to the bridge, seeing what the hell was going on at the bridge. And the bridge was similarly unresponsive. It was at that point that main power got knocked offline. And after that, well, those of us here, and she motions at the survivors, we barricaded ourselves in main engineering and prayed that someone would come save us. Um, Savvy wants to take a look around the room. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the racial makeup of the people that survived? If you use that one floating momentum that you have extra, I will answer that question. Let's do it. So, Savvy. Uh, I guess, let me, can I be a little more specific? Sure. Um, I guess races like, so races that there's a commonality between them uh, versus maybe other races that may have been present, like, uh, is there mostly telepaths left or is there mostly empaths? Like, is there something that the races that are here have a commonality to them, such as you've actually like hit all the, the humans may have died because they don't have telepathic abilities, but the Vulcans and the Anar survived because they do. Right. And you've actually hit the nail on the head here. Um, all of the surviving species are telepaths or empaths. They are, uh, what I would describe is that uh, maybe the one lone human that's in the room has an Esper rating. Not a very high one, but has an Esper rating all the same. So every single survivor is on some level an empath or a telepath. <clears throat> um, is Savia going to pass that over? S Savia will mention it. Uh, she'll just... Uh, Commander Rast, um, something I've noticed is... Uh, and he, forgive he motions, me. He motions for her to follow him out of the shuttle bay because he wants to talk to the captain anyway. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want to do it in front of all these folks. Yeah. Um, but she'll basically say, uh, I took a scan of the two doctors while we were speaking with them. Um, Dr. Caress is half an R uh, or part an R. Um, for my people, they were believed for a long time to be a mythical race, but they have telepathic abilities. Um, everybody who is pr all the races present, all the survivors are in some way telepathic or empathic. I believe that whatever drove the engineering people insane, maybe none of them were in. Uh, empathic or telepathic or they things as humans typically have um, I feel that if we continue on we may need to quarantine or perform 
extra medical duties in order to uh, prevent the non-telepaths from uh, losing their minds. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Uh, and uh, he, he's going to walk out in the hall um, and speak with the captain. Uh, captain, um, I do see the urgency and the potential uh, gains of going after what they're speaking about. And with the information gathered by uh, Dr. Maddock, I believe that if you would be willing to do so, I would uh, take on a small complement of people um, that we, we think we could protect from whatever this is and see if we can't find that planetoid. Uh, we've already taken measures in the beta section to firewall our our electronics. Uh, so we've already taken several steps where the beta section might be our most capable vessel right now of looking into this planetoid. It may very well be worth the risk, but to do so, we need to minimize any personnel on this ship that we can't guarantee their safety, at least marginally. So do we even know the whereabouts of this planetoid? Uh, add a character. Um, Vemia did mention that it must have gotten into the nebula, so you would have to go into the nebula and search for it. Okay, so... The, real quick, the astro... Mm -hmm. the, not the asteroid. Plus... The asteroid field that was around uh, the Pathfinder is that, and was that it was is that was it a large enough field to believe it may have been a planet or a small planetoid at some point, or does it look like? If you give me momentum, I will answer that question. Yeah, we're at six. Yeah. So I would say, uh, based on the debris, the it's actually debris. Like, the planetoid was breaking up, and it's not the entire planetoid, but it is a significant portion of it. So if I had to give you a percentage, there's maybe about 60% somewhere in that nebula. But we don't have very much time to make this decision, Captain. I have I, I have no problem leading an expedition of this nature. Mr. Rast, the crew of the Pathfinder stuck their noses somewhere, and over half of them died. Understand that before I tell you, yes, you're going to do this. You need to be careful. Always. I had grins to himself. <laughs> I want all of the um, non-telepathic or empathic humanoids transferred to what ship are we on right now? Gamma? You guys are on beta. We're on beta. Uh, transfer them to Gamma. And we're going to have to take all of these folks out of here as well. Uh, anybody that's anybody that's here in the uh, in the quarantine section, I think we should just move them to another ship. The other uh, the other ships don't have the firewall. And also, these people survived it once. I mean, no, that's true. Just as maybe a, maybe we can. They need to stay where they're at. We can probably cobble together at least a a, a fairly competent crew from them. Well, if Competent, we transfer... if not forthcoming. Yeah. You were able to convince them otherwise, ma'am. <laughs> well, we're pretty much still as dead in the water as almost possible. <laughs> so uh, make it so. Very well. Um Commander Williams, uh, prepare to take on some extra crew from the from the beta section. We'll be uh, offloading all non-telepath and empathic um, capable uh, crew members to your ship. Wait, what? 
Why? Uh, <laughs> beta section is going to be searching for the planetoid. What planetoid? <laughs> so the <laughs> so so real quick, uh, the the Pathfinder had found a planetoid, um, and they had begun. Well, all this happened because they were going after a planetoid with advanced uh, alien technology uh, present upon that planetoid, which we believe had a negative effect on non-telepathic uh, uh, individuals. And uh, the captain has asked me to lead an expedition uh, to go and search for that planetoid. I'll just open up the channel to Alpha section. Captain, are you sure you're feeling all right? <laughs> RJ. I mean, I'll do it. It but... gets weird out here, okay? We're going to hey, do you don't, you don't, you don't. You don't have to tell me. Hey, Ras, do you want me to transfer any telepathic crew members I've got aboard Gamma to you? Yes. Oh, wait. I just had an idea. Out of character. Oh. They found us, right? Isn't that the distress signal? Yes. They found us. That is has got to be the intelligence on that planetoid talking. It used the it would have could have used the bioneural gel packs to send the message. Fugitive planetoid. Whatever's on the planetoid. Yeah. As a empath or telepath, um, I may have very well encountered situations where people have used technology or something else to block themselves by being affected by telepathy and em empathic abilities. Would that be f a fair statement? I'd say it would be. Uh, is there a way that we could rig something up? Um, I I'm going to run this by the captain, letting her know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sir, I've, I've come across things in the past where we've been able to block telepathic and empathic abilities. Uh, if there is anybody that you believe that is essential for this um for this task that we need upon the beta section maybe we can arm them in such a way um she's not willing to risk that i don't disagree so so we will be transferring jensen to the uh to the gate to the gamma gamma section as well so about that uh it's probably is, about is this... he afraid of transporters it, no, 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 it's not that. Okay. Uh, in, <laughs> in my lore, as much as my lore matters, um, and you would probably be, Savia would probably be coming up to you at this point, because I imagine Savia has been somewhat privy to this conversation, like she's checking crew oh, manifests. Yeah. Um, were you there, Matic, when I revealed that the Jensen line is part Dowd? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. What? I get to keep Jensen. Yeah, so you get to keep Jensen, yes. Jensen there. is 132 Dowd. Oh my god. I just every and time I, he talks, I, I, I keep hearing that's Morty. like that's like someone saying I'm 118th Cherokee or something. <laughs> like that just doesn't and, and I think uh Matic needs to uh needs to run Jensen for sure. <laughs> Make uh, seconded, seconded. Um, <laughs> made of pure energy, immortal beings of disguises and false surroundings. I've never heard of them before. Uh, they were the uh, oh, it's the guy from that where they go down and like it's a huge illusion. Yep, in PNG. Okay, yep, that's them. <laughs> yeah, so okay. we're going to uh. We're going to go through the crew manifest and see who we have that can come with us. All right. Well, let's take a few moments <laughs> to uh, decide who everyone's playing, because I would like everybody to have uh, at least a character that they're playing. So obviously, Rast. I have one. Rast is Rast. I've got, I've, uh, I've, I've got one, too, Jensen. actually. Um, oh, I mean, I can either. I've got androids. Uh... Yeah, I do have the android who is high security and high uh, engineering. Yeah, so let's have let's have Matic do hail. Uh, oh. I've got uh, I've got Ensign Valek. He's a Vulcan. That would work. Nice. And he's in he's in uh, he's in sciences. So 
Let me actually, let me start throwing this on a map so that I'm not losing this. So, Valic. Okay. Uh, sorry, one moment. The tokens are being weird. All right, Valic, hail. And I will have you on my headset so I will hear this, but I have to go handle something real quick. Sure. All right, so Balik, Hale, Rast, uh, who are you taking, Watney? I don't have anyone who's empathic. She can play Jensen. I guess Savia could be part Anar if we want to do a little retcon and have her be a little telepathic. It's up to you. I mean, it's up to you. <laughs> I don't, I, I mean. I'm cool with anything. I mean, wait, I can do that. Okay, so we'll have you do Savia. Because Alela is pure Denobulid. All right. So. <laughs> and then I believe, uh, who's rolling Jensen then? Matic? No, Matic already has Hale. That's Hale. Well, somebody's got to be Jensen. Uh, the DLH, the you DM. get to DM, DMPC now. DMPC? Okay. All right. So, uh, needless to say, uh, you do a little bit of uh, crew hopscotch to get them where they need to go. And uh, in the process, uh, I would like... Uh, nah, I won't do a roll for it. I was thinking of having you do a roll for it, but you're already at five momentum, so I don't see a point for it. All right. So, uh, let me just finish up one more quick thing with the tokens. Uh, Valic is a Ensign, correct? Correct. correct. All right, Ensign Valic. Because apparently when I set these guys' as tokens up, it did not save, which I apologize for, but that's the perils of running an online game. All right, there we go. All right, so uh, what happens is the beta section uh, is going to more or less uh, take on new crew. And going to assemble an away team made out of uh, completely telepath or otherwise telepathically inclined individuals. Now, as this is all going on, uh, there is still the no small feat of finding the planetoid within the nebula uh, with the dampening effect of the nebula itself. So, uh, those among you, uh, of those you have selected... I need someone to do a reason science assisted by the ship's sensor science at a difficulty of four. And that I is including a... your advanced sensors. I can I reason. can I try to do a little bullshit real quick? <coughs> you can certainly try. Go ahead. Uh, with Hale, could he interface himself into the beta section and using engineering allow a boost of power to the sensors? to allow the sensors to feed into the computers that would allow uh, what's left of the debris that is already here to kind of plot a best case scenario pathway through this nebula to where the planets would, would currently be. If you spend two momentum, I will reduce the difficulty with all that in mind to a three. <laughs> Which... Some bullshit. <laughs> Just I mean, it's it's an advantage. I mean, it's technically creating an advantage. Yeah, that's I mean, that's what you're doing. Is you're creating the it's advantage. Creating advantage. Um, I just wanted okay. to be able to use reason engineering, but okay. So, uh, I mean, I can. Uh, Felix like as a science officer. I'm pretty sure I can. I can handle that. All right, go for it. Uh, All right, the difficulty is only a three. And is we're definitely doing. Science? We're definitely doing the cheerleading. Cheerleading. Okay. Okay. So. So we're, are we doing the two momentum for the advantage to make it a three? So then advanced sensors would make it a two? No, advanced sensors was already included when I said four. So it was originally a five, but advanced sensors knocked it down to a four. Okay. So now it's a three. Correct. Awesome. All right. And uh, I'm going to spend momentum to give them an extra die anyway. Just maybe we can generate some momentum with this. Okay. Um, and he doesn't have any focuses that here can um, hail assist... it would... if i would okay, say that I... the cat or that rast is already assisting so if you can tell rast to not assist then you could assist yes it's only it's okay. it's really meant to only be one assist but we don't include the ship in that um okay jim can i try a little uh matic level bullshit sure <laughs> all right 
Um, so Felix got a focus in archaeology. Okay. By using by using the debris that was around the Pathfinder as a baseline, can he sort of extrapolate a trajectory by scanning for a consistent carbon decay rate? If you spend two momentum, it'll now be a difficulty of two. All right, let's. I'll, I'll do it. All right. All right. We now have no more momentum, people. It's fine. It's fine. Man, Easy go. Through that. Easy go. <laughs> <sighs> all right i see three successes five successes so yeah uh you and get the ship yeah and the, and the ship i think we just got some what's so the got ship four, we got uh sensor momentum. science for the ship or three sensor science all right da -da -da -da. sensor science yes all right all so right. you get four momentum right back very nice and yeah, uh, the good news is that with all the bullshittery combined, you actually find the planetoid very quickly. Uh, <laughs> and it's a good thing, because I'm now going to reveal a new handout for you all to disseminate how you wish via roleplay. It should be the planetoid scan results. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I guess since Felix on the sensors, I'll I'll start. Um, and Commander Rast is in command here, so mm -hmm. uh, I'll just sort of spin in his station, look at him, and say, um, "Commander, it is most curious. Scans show signs of construction on the planetoid. There are perfect geometrical shapes repeated in patterns that indicate construction rather than geological formation." It's, uh, Commander, it seems that the, uh, nebula's composition along with the, uh, minerals of the planetoid itself is causing an ion storm. However, that ion storm is what's causing this planet to, uh, slowly rip itself apart in a way. Is there any way that we can make sure that we're going to be able to transport in and out. Uh, Velik, I know that you have some history in archaeology. Uh, are you able to analyze the structures and see if you can figure out where you would go? What's the first place you would explore? And let's let's see if we can't get a crew together and beam in and out. I will certainly try, Commander. However, I must warn you that scans also indicate extreme geologic instability within the planetoid. Uh, which and is it why, seems to be worsening. Which worsening. is which is why your your best guess is going to be very important here, Mr. Balik. Oh jeez. Um, all right, I'll 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 roll for that GM, uh, mm -hmm. whatever you'd like. I'd like you to roll me a insight science, uh, difficulty of I'm going to spend some threat here, difficulty of 4. Uh, and your focus with archaeology would apply. Okay. Uh, I'm going to spend a momentum to get an extra die. Okay. Uh, is the ship going to be assisting? Uh, no, this is purely you as a person. Oh, it's a speculation. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you actually might want to spend more for uh, more yeah. dice. I'll spend an extra two to get a, to get a fourth. Okay. All right, come on. Uh, and I don't... I, this you I can't assume, assist. Or... Yeah, yeah, this so you can't good. assist, unfortunately. All right, so you have scored three successes here. Uh, what I would say real, is... Oh, go real ahead. quick, mm -hmm. um, with Hale being an android, I'm assuming he would have access to previous knowledge of these areas. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for him to assist by possibly saying, like, hey, these these areas that have this makeup are, th are typically this pattern or, like, this tends to be where the data cores are, this is where the information is from previous existing similar sites and similar uh, archaeological studies done on these uh, planets? I will allow it, but there's going to be a complication which we'll reveal in time. So you will succeed here, but there is going to be an unknown complication. Your bullshittery is amazing, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
That's why we brought him yeah. on the show. It's just like a conveyor belt. Of... <laughs> like a... Hey, it's Matt's like got to stay out of prison somehow, okay? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's easy to you, son. Um, well, yeah, I feel like we'll look at Commander Rass and say, I, I believe I've located a suitable site for transport, Commander. And I'll just you know, point. All point. right. Uh, who all is on the ship? Who's the next highest ranking officer on the ship? Uh, actually, I think that would be Commander Saniri, uh, who is currently still assisting the uh, wounded. As much as I want to go, I can't. Damn it. I would say you uh, could. It, there, you could tell Saniri to command the ship and she'll come up. So don't feel like you're shackled. Yeah, she's a yeah, commander. Yeah, she's a commander. Oh, so she took the command test. She's fine. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I, will, I, I will just... Uh, Deep to her. Uh, you're in command, uh, just in case you need something. Sneary, <laughs> like, there's a pause, and Sneary goes, uh, Yes, sir. I will head up to the bridge immediately. All right. Uh, thank you. Ed, did you roll for that assist, Matic? I, I just gave it to him. Oh, okay, great. Awesome. Wait, is Sneary. Uh, she is a Cation, but uh, apparently during the whole personnel transfer, she did not need to transfer off, which I'm going to let you decide what that means. We're in danger. That's, that's the complication that's going to arise later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Mm, okay. I mean, at least if we go down, we only take one third of the ship with us. <laughs> I mean, she's... You have no idea how much I wanted to leave Vincent Jensen in the command. Oh, my God. Are you kidding? It would be fantastic. That would be amazing. <laughs> All right. So uh, we cut ahead just a little bit in time to the away team beaming down to the surface of the asteroid. Now, when you, of course, you all are in EV suits. Uh, when you materialize and uh, you are able to get your bearings, the gravity of the planetoid is almost moon level. So you are still tethered to the asteroid, but you can do high jumps. You feel a lot less weighty, that sort of thing. Uh, but what immediately catches your attention is the brilliance of the nebula around you. Uh, again, it is swirling dark purple and uh, blue gases, and it's actually a very majestic sight. Uh, however, the complication from earlier is that when you beam down, you find yourselves not only in the middle of the geometric buildings and shapes, but the moment you materialize, there's a massive shift in the ground beneath you, and cracks, great cracks in the planetoid begin forming. And I need each and every one of you to roll me a fitness and a con, please. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, how about a hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, proficiency <laughs> focus here? Unfortunately, you cannot do hand-to-hand -hand combat <laughs> against the planetoid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would argue that you could, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat teaches you balance. Does it, though? I'll allow it. There I'll is, there it. is. Okay, no, I'm not saying nothing. Oh, uh, thank God I didn't kill your wife. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, she's already died once, all right? I was so I mean... worried. <laughs> I'm actually fucking um, rolling. I can't believe it. <laughs> all right, I'm seeing successes so far. In fact, Medic, uh, uh, one moment to Hale Who's is uh, Well, I need to see who are we missing. We need Valik. No, Valik rolled. It's uh, uh, it's Hale. I'm, I'm, Hale needs to roll. I'm uh, I'm doing a little bullshit real quick. Um, okay. Hey, you tried to stop my bullshit from working, so <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> actively I'm going to actively work against your bullshit here. Oh, that's good. We're now playing uh, Paranoia. <laughs> um. By coming onto the planet and by learning how to stand and uh, work and judge how the uh, 
how the planetoid may affect uh, how they move. Um, mm -hmm. Hale is currently uh, gathering information, and that's one of his focuses. <laughs> information gathering. <laughs> sure. Why not? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. So what happens is it's everybody but Hale. You're fine. <laughs> you keep your feet. Uh, you are able to get out of the way of the forming chasms in the rock. Hale, unfortunately, uh, is going to be caught off balance and is falling <laughs> in such a way that he doesn't fall completely into a forming uh, canyon, but he falls just enough that you have two options here, Matic. Hale can either suffer a complication, which is going to be an injury, or you can roll me a fitness and security at a difficulty <laughs> of three to catch yourself. But if you fail the fitness and security, Hale is going to fall into this forming canyon. And I don't think I need to tell you how dangerous that is, even for an android. Ooh. Um, Being an android, he's a computer, and so therefore I would like to use my computer's focus. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I mean that's some circular <laughs> logic. If I ever that's heard yeah. It. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm gonna. I'll roll for it. All, All right, right, let's go. Let's go. We got that uh, one hope. We got one whole momentum. We might as well just use it. Uh, this is the second time using hail. So wouldn't I be able to do the shit with him? You could no? do it. Yes. Um. Ooh. Shit with him. <laughs> Give him a attribute right uh, i can add a focus right you can't add a focus he is now have a focus of acrobatics okay <laughs> okay he has an acrobatic subroutine uh so that gives me 3d20 initiating surface <laughs> oh, fuck. okay oh, so, i'll take I'll, I'll, oh, I'll uh I'll take I'll take the death. Yeah. So unfortunately, I think this is going to be our first on-screen oh. death of the campaign as Lieutenant Hale loses his balance completely and there's just maybe even a moment of shock on his face as he flails and does his best to grab onto something, anything, but he just vanishes into the dark recesses of this planetoid. And I I will shoot real quick out and ask if there's any way that anybody can lock onto him. I would say yes, it's possible, but your best engineer is two feet that way. It doesn't matter. <laughs> somebody, somebody try to lock on to whatever of him you can, even if it's just his head. <laughs> even if it's just his head. <laughs> just get something back to the ship. Since this is your idea, Rast, roll me a 1d100, please. Oh, so that... <laughs> oh, boy. Does that also mean Matic gets to play Jensen now? Yes. Yes, it does. This Dang is it. what you get for not wanting to play Jensen. <laughs> All right. So, oh. uh, Rast. You get 28% of them? <laughs> yeah. Rast, you tap your comments and say, I don't care what you do, get part of Hale out. And the reply back is, sir, we got his head and a bit of his shoulders, but the rest of it didn't come through, sir. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so the good news is Hale Hopefully isn't can... super dead, but he's kind of out of the picture for a while. Oh, yes, I think so. <laughs> he's going to end up being a pet project for Matic for a little while. Mm -hmm. Matic can put a whole bunch of weird temporal enhancements in him. And he's not... Gone. And he's Thank not you for the idea. Dead. Yeah. And if that wasn't bad enough with you all just now dealing with that, we're going to cut back to the bridge. Oh, boy. And uh, let me just do some token cleanup here. Uh, hey, oh. Let's see. Williams isn't there either. So, Captain. Bon bonus points mm -hmm. if you can put a hail head on the <laughs> Just throw the hail head in there. Uh, it, falls, it falls through the hole in the ceiling. Oh, God. Just storing heads up there now. Um, so That's Cap why the ceiling's unstable. Oh, God. 
Um, well, it's all the regulation rocks. Um, and M80s. Yeah. Sorry, focus. All right. So, Captain, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. Alpha Section is just starting to come back online under, like, it. you had minimal power. Now you're starting to get normal power back. Um, but as the view screen flickers back to life, you see something you don't like. And by that, I mean, I am literally spending a lot of threat to do this, but the pathfinder, the lights are coming back on. Come on. And (sighs) what is with zombie stuff? (laughs) Lieutenant black turns and says, captain, the phasers on the pathfinder are charging. And that is where we're going to stop the session because I'm ah! a dick. So, uh, this is going to be okay. a two-parter. And uh, you'll just have to tune in next week to uh, see what happens. Oh, my God. But, yeah, that uh, that's going to be the end of our session. Hopefully, everybody had a good time. I do want to say special thanks to uh, the Kobold crowd that came out. You guys, again, smashed my viewership records. Uh this, we, we've hovered around 100 constant. We hit like 160 at one point, I think. So thank you all for coming out. Hopefully you've enjoyed what you've seen and uh, encourage you to hit that, uh, as cliche as it is to say, hit that follow, sub, patron, whatever. I appreciate it. But really, I just like seeing your uh, faces in chat. Really appreciate it. Um, as I said, uh, next week we are going to be on, uh, but I think the week... The two weeks after that are a little bit weird schedule-wise. I'll know more next week uh, what we're doing for the rest of December. Um, But we are definitely playing next week unless something really weird happens. Uh, But this is where I'm going to end the stream. So Twitch, YouTube, etc. Thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, I guess we'll find out what happens to these guys next week. Later stream. Bye, guys.